Hi, this is Frankie from About Script, and in this video we're going to talk about GIMP. GIMP's a program that lets you edit images. It's very similar to Photoshop. The main difference is about $400, bringing it down to a price of free. So uh, if you don't have Photoshop and can't afford it, GIMP is uh, just about as good. It just is a little bit different. I remember when I first started using GIMP, I absolutely hated it. It was the worst thing in the world. But once you get to use it after a while, it just becomes natural, it becomes quick. If you're on Linux, it doesn't take nearly as long to start up as Photoshop. GIMP does take a little longer to start up on Windows computers, in my experience. Um, but we're just going to dive right in and learn how to do some basic image editing, because when I first started out, I had no idea. So let's start with something very common. We're going to have uh, this picture here. And what we want to do is we want to change the background. So I have another picture here. You'll never guess what this is of, but this is a finger. And we're going to set this to be our nice skyline. So uh, notice that we have a JPEG image here. So to uh, be able to work with transparency, we have to right click on this background layer and go down to Add Alpha Channel. If you don't have this Layers or Toolbox um, bars on the side of your screen, they're separate windows, you could access them by going to Windows and then either Toolbox or Layers, and that'll cause them to appear, and then just reposition them like you would any other window by dragging the title bar. So now that we have this, we need to get rid of this blue background. So you might notice some things. Uh, I'm zooming by holding down Control and using the middle mouse wheel. Control plus and minus also works and the middle mouse button lets you pan around. Um, you notice that we want to get rid of the blue, but we have a lot in these areas here. So there's two ways that we could do it. We could either use our little magic wand tool here, which some of you may be familiar with. I recommend putting a feathered edge of about five pixels because this is a somewhat small image, but we still want some feathering because this thing isn't exact. What that does is it basically um, when we select something like this, there's a few pixels in here that become somewhat selected, but not completely selected, giving it a nice uh, a nice look around the edges. Uh, the threshold down here lets you determine how much of a variance. If you put this all the way up to a really large number, then when you select, you select pretty much everything. 15 seem to be working for us. And so we can go and we can shift select all of these different sections, and we hit delete. It deletes them, but you notice there's a lot of other things we're missing because they're not connected. So what we're going to do instead is we're going to find our little color select tool, and we're going to set our feathered edges to 5, and all that looks good. And then we'll click somewhere that looks like the middle of what color we want. Bump this up a little. And does that look right? Looks right to me. And we can fix little mistakes in it later. So grab this tool here, and then just select whatever didn't get grabbed. You just notice little things around the edges. So it's not an exact science, but it's pretty much good enough for what we need. And if you want to go back and select some other things like this, we can do that. And that got rid of some more. And we can come in here, and what we're going to do for this, uh, we're just going to leave it, because it doesn't need to be exact. This isn't a perfectionist uh, picture. If you did, you could go and you know delete individual pixels, but we're not going to waste our time with something like that. So now you notice we have this image over here, and we want to add it to this image. So how we do that is somewhat simple. We select all, and we copy. Then we come over here, and paste. Now you see this floating layer selected paste layer thing over here. That means that it's uh, it's still not applied to the picture yet. So you could either merge it with the layer below it or uh, just give it a name. So we're going to just name it background and then put it behind the layer named background, which we can click on the name and name it foreground. And you see now we have a nice background, even though it doesn't work completely. Um, when you save in GIMP, you want to go to File, Save As, 
and we're going to call it new sky. And if you don't put an extension on it like .jpg, it saves it automatically as a uh, GIMPs format, which is XCF. And then you can later go and save a copy as new sky .jpg or .png, and then it'll be able to be used elsewhere. <laughs> So we have this. Uh, I like our sky a little bit rotated though. If you see, we can hide this layer just by clicking the, uh, the eye. Or another cool feature is that if you click on the layer and then drag this opacity down, you can see through it a little bit. Even if you don't use that for your final image, it still lets you work with it a little bit better. So we click back to our background, hit Control A to select all, and then look for a rotating tool. One thing that I like more than Photoshop is that you can put numbers in very easily. And we just do something like that. And now it's at 180. We rotate it, and then we right click on the floating layer and anchor it. Now if we go up to our foreground and bump up the opacity, you see it looks a little bit nicer. I'm not going to go into how to make the colors match in this video because obviously the lighting is different from this picture to this one. But uh, we're just going to move on and learn some other things. So let's close out of this image and close out of this image. And you notice now we're back to this main window here. If you have no images open and you close this window or your toolbox, I believe you can close your layers without causing any problems and then just get it back with Control L. And then you can open another image to work on. So let's work with a cup. So we have this cup, and if you look at it, I probably shook the camera a little bit when I took this picture. There's a lot of blurring. So we're going to use a very common effect called unsharpened mask. To, do, to get to that, go to the filters at the top, enhance, and then unsharpen mask. You see we get a nice little preview here, which is different from what we see in the main image. And with this, we can adjust our, our um, settings for the radius, the amount, and the threshold of blurriness. And then, if we hit OK, it applies it. You see your progress down at the bottom here. And now the picture is much more crisp, much more clear, and that just took a few seconds. So if you ever have a picture that's a little bit blurry, that's a quick way to fix it up in GIMP. I believe I had one more thing I wanted to do. Huh. Uh, when you open an image that was taken uh, horizontally, when you, you turn your camera to the side a little bit and you take a picture, it will ask you if you want to rotate it. What it shows in the preview is how it'll rotate if you click Keep Orientation, and if you click Rotate, it'll go the way that you probably want it. So now we have this image like this, and there's a few problems with it. One, it's a little bit dark, and two, it's not uh, straight on. We want to get it straight on and get rid of this background. So to do that, uh, first we're going to get us a nice grid. View, show grid. OK. And then with our image, we are going to go into the perspective tool, which I believe is this one. Click on our image and we can drag our perspective thing off to the side. It doesn't have to stay over the image you're working with. Now you just kind of drag your image and then see where it lines up with these lines that you just uh, added with your grid. And that looks good on the top. So now we come down to the bottom and we drag this over. And it's not quite lined up. We have to move it back a few. Okay. That looks nice there. And we try to make a straight line on the bottom and a straight line on the right side. And that appears to be good. Hit transform to apply the transformation. Now what we should be able to do, assuming we did this correctly, is get rid of our grid and draw a nice box around our image. When you draw the box uh, or your rectangle selection, 
uh, it's not all hope lost when you release the button. You can then continue to drag these little handles that appear on the sides or the handles on the corner if you want to move in multiple directions. So let's see, we did a pretty good job of this. And once we have that, I prefer this over the crop tool. Some people prefer the crop tool, most do, which is also over here and works basically the same way. But if you use the rectangle select tool, you can then go to image, crop to selection. And now we have our nice sign. Now one thing that's still a problem is the brightness in the picture. So we have a colors menu. Most of the time colors are just grouped with filters in most programs that I've seen, but we have a colors menu with some useful tools. You can manually adjust your brightness and contrast if you want a little more control, or a lot of times the auto settings will work just fine. So we could try uh, auto white balance, which gives us pretty much what, what we needed exactly. And now we have a nice bright sign. This could be you know, shared somewhere on the internet, assuming you have the rights to it and stuff. Although this is not my, my property, it's copyright of Walt Disney Corporation. So just keep that in mind. And we're going to be moving on. Um, we had some other blurry things, but I'm just going to leave those for now. We have a nice little parking lot here, which we could do some fun things with. So I'm going to uh, show you how to do some things based on your selections. So let's select, see if we can select this parking lot. Just the main part of the parking lot. And uh, how I like to see if my selection is working is I add an alpha channel and then delete. And whatever is deleted is selected. So that looks like a pretty good selection. The only thing I'm going to do is I'm going to deselect using my polygon tool. So you have these modes down here. You have your normal, which is replace a selection. You drag a rectangle, and then you drag another rectangle, and the first one's gone. You can add to a selection, or you can subtract from a selection. So we're just going to come and cut out all the stuff that we don't want to be selected. OK. It's just a rough thing. It's not anything too particular. And what we're going to do now is we're going to play with the colors of just our selected. So if we go colors and then we go into our nice hue and saturation tool, you see we can manually adjust each of the, the colors. So let's say we want our blues to be darker and a little more saturated. So we have a bright blue parking lot. Um, light this down. Then we go back to our master, and we shift the hue a little bit, so it goes to some other color, and brighten it up, and oversaturate it, and then we just adjust some other things until we get whatever we want for our picture. And if we go and deselect that, you see it looks a little bit crude because we didn't really do it too great, but you've just changed the color of the parking lot, left the lines, left all this stuff the same because you're just operating on a selection, which is a big concept in GIMP. So that's just some of the basic stuff. Um, I'm just going to go over a few more really basic tools. We're just going to create a new blank image here. Um, you have your fill, which allows you to fill things in. Um, you have your colors, so you can select a color. You have a pencil and a paintbrush, which also has a variety of brushes. For example, you could have some sort of hatched lines or smoky things, and you can adjust the size of those. Um, you have gradients, which are just drawn from point A to point B, and usually you just change the start, uh, your foreground and background color to work with the gradients. You can add text by typing and change the font size and whatnot. And then uh, text remains editable as long as you save your file as an XCF file and not an image. So I can, you know, do some other stuff like like draw on the background layer, and then go back to my text, hit the text tool, and click on the text, and you see I can edit it again. 
you have some other things like calligraphy and whatnot and erasers that only work on uh, other layers. There's a blur tool, sharpen tool, dodge tool, all those things that are just typical for image programs. And uh, you can also move layers using the move tool, which can either work by what you're clicking on, or a cool tip is move the active layer. So you select a layer if it's hard to grab, and then wherever you click on the image, it grabs that layer. And that's going to be it for this video. I, that's just some basic concepts in how to use GIMP practically. You won't often find yourself using GIMP to draw pictures and stuff, although I, I tend to, but most people just use it to edit their images, make them look a little nicer, or a little more orange, if that's what you're trying to do, and um, or clean things up. So uh, this has been Frankie with About Script, and I will see you next time. Let me know if there's any videos that you guys want done. I know about quite a bit of software, and I could do tutorials for it if I know enough about it. So thanks, and I will see you.